is getting his followers to escape to South Carolina, down south. And Bill Bartolini went to Delaware County today, where relatives of the followers are becoming very frantic. This is the home of who some call a prophet of doom. Others call Michael Marcolongo a man of God. His followers come from middle to upper middle class families. The Volpes are a good example. They and their three children have given up everything. And according to relatives, given it all to Reverend Marcolongo. They plan to move to the church of our first love's commune in South Carolina. It reminds me of another Jim Jones. I'm safe for the, for the life that they go down. They're supposed to go down south, and, and we're not supposed to know where they're going. Some parents say they found out that up to 90 people have joined this so-called cult. Sue and Neil Hiller's son, 20-year-old Doug, is one of them. Yeah, I don't think these kids love them. I think they just follow them out of total fear. <laughs> go inside what some people call a dangerous religious cult. Relocating from the Delaware Valley to South Carolina. We're about to experience a limited nuclear war and total destruction of our economy. Those people are selling their possessions and moving to a small commune in South Carolina. But their family and friends say they've been brainwashed into believing the doomsday predictions of radio minister R.G. Steyer. Reverend Steyer's commune is located in Walterboro, South Carolina. Eyewitness News reporter Paul Moriarty traveled there this weekend and talked with members of what has been described as a doomsday cult. Reverend Steyer has been compared by some critics to Jim Jones, the preacher who led his flock to their deaths by feeding them cyanide-laced Kool-Aid. So no, we're not going to die by Kool-Aid. We may die by the guns of those fools up there in Philadelphia who think we're crazy. They might kill us. Tonight at 11, Paul Moriarty will tell us how this self-described prophet of God is causing controversy right here in the Delaware Valley. Behind the... As Eyewitness News first reported on a church group in Delaware County that some are calling a religious cult. Members of the Church of Our First Love believe that nuclear war and economic disaster will soon hit Philadelphia, and so they're preparing by selling all their belongings and moving to a protective commune in South Carolina. Eyewitness News reporter Paul Moriarty has just returned from that commune, and he joins us now. Paul? That's right, Jack. Church members are leaving Philadelphia because they say the end is near, but their family and friends are truly worried and say the relatives have been brainwashed by the teachings of a charismatic radio evangelist, Reverend R.G. Stair. And while several Delaware Valley families are preparing to leave for the South Carolina commune, some are already there. Chuck Rose came from the Delaware Valley. He brought two other families with him to worship with Reverend Stair. He's a prophet. He's a pastor. Side, Brother Stair saying he's a true prophet of God, and several families on the Delaware Valley are happy here. I'm Bill Baldini in South Carolina, and I'll have that story. His followers call him a prophet. His opponents call him the leader of a cult. He is Brother Ralph Stair, a man who is predicting a nuclear attack on American cities by the end of this year. Among the people who have sold their possessions and moved to South Carolina with them are several families from our own Delaware Valley. And tonight, in part two of a special report, Channel 10's Bill Baldini travels to South Carolina to talk with Brother Ralph and his followers. They pray like this every morning and evening with Brother Ralph Stair orchestrating the service. You must sell off all your worldly goods and be free from debt to live among Brother Stair's chosen people in South Carolina. And that's created controversy here in the Delaware Valley. The families of those who already packed up and left for the so-called South Carolina promised land believe their loved ones are being brainwashed. We don't believe in brainwashing. We believe in soul washing. I, didn't, what are, I, I finished 10th grade. I've been preaching 38 years. Again, what is brainwashing? I don't sit here and go through rituals over and over again and tell people that to, uh, to try to get something out of their brain and put it in. I don't... Ten of the 37 people who make up Stair's present flock are from the Delaware Valley. Jerry and Linda McCourt, along with their daughter Abigail, are one of those families. They say charges of cultism and the like from their families are not true. I think it's stupid to tell you the truth. I think it's nonsense and I think it's, uh, these people are, are not rational. And uh, how about your family? Family. It's a church of doom, a religious group that believes nuclear war and economic collapse will soon hit urban America. 
Some of its members are from the Philadelphia area, but they're moving to a survivalist camp in South Carolina. Channel 3's Paul Moriarty has been following this story, and tonight he reports on life in this religious community. Wasn't too good. Nah, that's a little better. <laughs> Over there we have collard these are the members of a Christian commune in Waltersboro, South Carolina, a tightly knit disciplined group that believes this man, Reverend R.G. Stair, is a true prophet, the voice of God on earth. Something is going to shake America before the month of May is over. The removal of Mr. Reagan, or the collapse of our economy, or a limited nuclear war. So they tend the communal crops, build new shelters, and stockpile tons of food staples because they believe that while many of us will soon be destroyed in a nuclear war, this commune will survive. That's how Gerard McCourt sees it. He just moved here from Philadelphia. Bill Baldini continues a special report. This week, we've been telling you about a preacher whose followers sell almost everything they own and move to South Carolina to be with a man they call Brother Ralph. His followers say he is a prophet. His opponents say he's leading a cult and brainwashing people. Tonight, as his special report continues, Bill Baldini shows what is going on at Brother Ralph's church to people in the Delaware Valley whose family members are among Brother Ralph's faithful. They may say that they're there on their own free will, but I honestly don't think so. Gloria Ahern is talking about her daughter, Linda, and her son-in-law, Jerry McCourt. They are one of three families from the Delaware Valley who sold all their belongings, shunned their families, and went to South Carolina to join radio preacher Brother Ralph Stair. I spoke to Linda in South Carolina, and she said she told her mom she is free to come and go. I said, do you want the number and the address? And she said, no. Would you be glad to talk to them? Sure, I would. I, my sister-in-law called. Without trying to convert them, you'd be good. No. Today, Gloria Ahern reacted to tape we brought back from South Carolina. Was the woman you saw on that tape mentally your daughter? Not in my opinion. Like most of Brother Stair's female followers, Linda takes a back seat to men. Women do not wear makeup or wear slack. They have little to say. In a sense, they are kept in the kitchen barefoot and pregnant. She was a leader and not a follower. She was very frugal and very sensible about money. She would never, ever give it away. One of the major controversies has to do with families who allegedly sold all their worldly goods, like this truck, to move down here to South Now, Eyewitness News has been giving you a behind-the-scenes look at what many people consider a religious cult. Some of its members in Delaware County, Pennsylvania, have been selling their houses and possessions and moving to a church commune in South Carolina. Their relatives and friends fear the worshipers are being victimized by a sinister, money-hungry preacher. Tonight in this continuing series, Church of Doom, Channel 3's Paul Moriarty reports on one family reaching out to keep a loved one from going to the commune. I want somebody to say something to him. Sue Hiller was trying to contact her son this morning. She and her husband, Neil, haven't talked with him in two weeks. Their son, Doug, has separated himself from his family, and now his parents believe he's headed here to this religious commune in South Carolina, a 75-acre compound consisting of some old trailers, a few acres of food crops, and a fanatical congregation that believes that economic collapse and nuclear war are about to turn America into a war zone. Reverend R.G. Stair is the leader of this group. His followers call him a true prophet of God. Something is going to shake America before the month of May is over. The removal of Mr. Reagan? or the class of our economy, or a limited nuclear war. Commune members believe in this doomsday message. That's why they're stocking up on rice and flour and as much food as they can find. They work to prepare for this doom and destruction, which they feel will occur within a month. There'll be economic collapse. Sure. Food shortages. It's fair. But like I said, uh, we feel that we're, you know, under God's protection here. Well, now we find out nobody has seen him. Meanwhile, back in Drexel Hill, so Sue sad. Hiller talks we with were, Reverend we were... Stair at the South Carolina Commune. She's still trying to locate her son, Doug. But as it turned out, Doug Hiller had not left for the religious commune in South Carolina. Instead, he was still in Drexel Hill and living here at the Church of Our First Love. And then finally, after two weeks of not hearing from their son, Doug Hiller called home. Have you been told not to contact us? Then I want to I want to meet with you. I want you to come and visit us. Because I think we have to sit down as a family and talk. 
It's important, Doug. It's important to the family, and it's, I think it's important to you. But after several minutes of coaxing, the Hillers are unsuccessful. Did it sound like your son to you? No, he sounded different. It's not possessed for life was gone. It was just like a, a parrot. My son has given up his, his mind. And he only thinks what he's told to think. Doug has also given up his memories, a scrapbook with childhood pictures, memories of the high school band, and his days as a football player at Upper Darby High. The Hillers found these pieces of Doug's past thrown away in a trash can. Now Sue Hiller can only hope that her public appeals will bring Doug back and keep him from what she feels is a dangerous religious cult. I want to tell him I love him so much. That's why we're doing this, honey. That's why we're doing this. Paul Moriarty, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. And tomorrow, Paul will take you back to South Carolina for a talk with the Reverend Stair and others there. He says they don't need doctors, they don't need outsiders, and they'll survive the day of doom. People in Delaware County, Pennsylvania, selling their homes and possessions, a religious commune in South Carolina. Both are part of a bizarre series of events involving fanatical church followers, fearful relatives, and what many people believe is a religious cult. Tonight, in another of his reports on the Church of Doom, Channel 3's Paul Moriarty goes to the commune for a look at one Delaware Valley couple. Linda McCord is out for a stroll with her 16-month-old daughter, Abigail. Meanwhile, her husband, Gerard, is doing some carpentry work on a mobile home. At mealtime, the McCourts now dine with these people, all belong to a religious commune that believes that this man, Reverend R.G. Stair, is the voice of God on earth. I want to tell you that we do believe the world's coming to the end. We believe it. The McCourts believe that this commune in South Carolina is the promised land, and here, living in this trailer and doing the will of God, they will be saved from destruction. But it was just a few weeks ago that Linda McCourt and her family lived in this modest suburban home in Drexel Hill. Then they sold it for $60,000, got rid of all their worldly possessions, and took off for South Carolina without telling family or friends. Donna Hastings was a neighbor. They just picked up left. Yeah, that's what it seemed like. But if Donna Hastings was surprised, Linda McCourt's mother was shocked. Now, if she loves us as she claims to, why did she go without saying goodbye to her family? Linda's mother is particularly upset because her daughter is seven months pregnant and had a difficult first pregnancy. But Reverend Stair, the commune's leader, does not believe in doctors, as he demonstrated to us. Look at that. 220 volts electricity. Blew my finger off right here. I didn't go to no doctor. It's controlled by a power-hungry preacher who says the world is ending and his followers should sell all their possessions. Now, a church member has left the group and is talking publicly for the first time about his experiences. Jim Jensen of Chester is a diabetic who has lost a leg because of the disease. He told Channel 3's Paul Moriarty that church leaders try to dominate his life, dictate medical procedures. A story of faith turned into fear, a story about a highly controversial church originally based in suburban Philadelphia that many people call a cult. For weeks now, we've been bringing you a series of reports on the group led by a preacher who says the world is about to end and his followers should sell all their possessions. In another of his continuing reports on the Church of Doom, Channel 3's Paul Moriarty talks with a man who left the church and is now talking publicly for the first time about his experiences. He says he felt like a prisoner. Every day I felt like my life was being threatened every day. 32-year-old Jim Jensen is talking about his life inside a Delaware County religious group, a group that he calls a cult. We first met Jensen several weeks ago. He walked with crutches as he entered the church. At that time, he refused to talk with us. Can I talk to you a second? Nope. I was afraid then. I was real scared. He wanted to talk to me. Yes, I did. Jensen came to fear the people living in this house, the headquarters of the church of our first love. As we first told you several weeks ago, the members of this religious group believe that by the end of this month, economic collapse and limited nuclear war will wipe out major cities in the United States. Church members believe they'll be saved if they move here to this religious commune in South Carolina. 